I found um, some nice photographs on the web, but also uh, some of my own photographs too of uh, Loch Lomond in Scotland um, on the west coast there um, not far from where we used to live um, just north of the Clyde um, and um, so I thought it would be nice to do um, just a, a nice mountain um, scene uh, with a lovely blue sky um, and some nice soft warm gentle colours um, so I'm going to do this this top uh, photograph um, and the nice thing about this photograph the arrangement is, is nice because um, you've got this lovely sort of soft warm middle ground you've got slightly duller and darker background mountains and then you've got this tree in the foreground to the right so first of all that gives you a lot of tonal perspective a lot of tonal depth um, because of those colours and the positions and so forth but also this tree in the foreground is offset to one side with branches which come over the top so you get this lovely sort of arch um, uh, effect um, and there's a lot of captured light as well there's obviously a lot of light in the sky I'm going to change that a little bit and go for some slightly more defined clouds um, but a fair amount of captured light uh, in the water too and what I'm going to show you um, when we come to do the water especially is that if you paint the water of a lake or a river or whatever just as it's shown in the photograph with a lot of blue it's better to see it down here um, you will shut the painting down blue is a lovely color it's one of my favorite colors but it will shut a painting down um, and so what i tend to do when i'm doing this sort of um, lake side or river side um, painting is capture the light on the water by making the middle ground quite light almost white in fact going back to the um, distant hills and so forth and then rich make the um, water in the, in the foreground richer um, and darker and warmer capturing the light behind it and that gives you a, a much I think a much um, better piece of um, artwork so um, the start is quite simple I've penciled out uh, the basic shapes of the mountains, the middle distance mountains, the reflection and um, the tree. Um, I've penciled that a bit darker than I would normally do but that's purely for the sake of the um, of the, the video. Um, normally I would do the sky and the sea probably at the same time. I won't do that now for the, for, for the video because um, I want to, see, to show you exactly how I work on the um, uh, on the clouds and also on the background mountains as they merge with the sky as well. So big brush, plenty of water and the sky is going to be essentially cobalt blue. I'm not going to put any other blues in, I want a nice clean blue sky so let's just stroke this in. Plenty of water I don't want any hard edges at this stage, so a streaky variegated wash I suppose is what I'm looking forward to. As I come down close to the, the mountains I'm going to add a little bit more water because I want it to be lighter above the mountains. The mountains are quite dark and by doing that I'm capturing the light on top of the mountains. I'm going to bring that water down over the mountains as well. Um, and now I'm going to just drop in some more, whilst that's wet, drop in some more cobalt blue where I'm going to have my main clouds. So make that darker. Clouds are light obviously um, and therefore to make them stand out you need a darker background sky. Just a little bit more perhaps. And now what you want is a clean piece of tissue paper and you just want to dab out fluffy cloud areas, don't make them too uniform. So removing that cobalt blue, a few more up here too. 
Now clouds are hard on their tops and light and more fluffy below. So I'm trying to move the uh, tissue to give me that sort of effect. Pressing a little bit harder where I want a bit of fluff in the clouds. Okay, and as I say, I want the cloud to be fluffy down below. So I'm taking a hungry brush, a slightly damp brush, and just moving up cobalt blue around a little bit, just to soften the bottom there a little bit. That's fine. Okay. Just remove that slightly hard edge. So you can just play around with this. All I'm doing is removing some of the blue, changing some of the position of the blue. There, that's fine. That gives us a nice uh, cloudy sky. Now, this is all a matter of timing. I want to start work on the, um, uh, the, the mountains in the background. Um, and I want the tops of the mountains to be sort of fairly soft and fluffy and so on. Um, and to do that, I keep the paper in this area damp. And what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to mix up my sky colour, cobalt blue, with a bit of yellow ochre, which gives me the sort of slightly light and dirty green. Now we'll see whether I'm doing this a bit too quick. Depends on just how damp this paper is. Just drop that in. It's not too bad, that's okay. As I say, I would not normally have my pencil marks quite as dark as that, so uh, just to give you the shape for the, um, the video. Add a little bit of burnt umber at the same time to the mix, just to change. the tone and uh, the colours. And I'm going to have, um, I didn't mention this, but I'm going to have an inversion coming down the mountainside. And to do that, an inversion is, is a um, cloud, usually in the early morning, that um, has got trapped below the top of the cloud, uh, the top of the, um, the mountains. So I'm just softening the bottom edge of the mountains there. So this paper is still all damp, a bit more yellow ochre. So I'm trapping that cloud in between two parts of the, the mountain, the part of the hill. I'm just going to go for pure Yellow ochre at this stage, bring that down fairly close to the water. Strengthen that up as it comes to the water. I'm working around the, um, the tree uh, trunk here, there's no need to do that, I could just go straight in. And you can see where, perhaps because I've got a little bit too much water there, the top of the mountain, or the top of the, the foreground hill is just a little bit too fluffy. So I think what I'll do is I'll just, yeah, that's better, strengthen that up. Don't want to get rid of the fluffiness too much. It's just
sort of tone in there where there's the, the cloud. Um, just tidy that up a little bit. I'm dropping in different colours, mainly yellow oak and burnt umber and a bit of cobalt blue. Slightly stickier here and there, just to give myself different tones. Going back to the top mountain, the, the distant mountain, just strengthening that up a little bit. So I'm just basically, I'm not referring to the photograph at all. I'm just just playing around. Giving a little bit more shape to this, to the edges of this um, inversion. Don't want it to be too big. But when you're up in the highlands, that's very often what you see is the sort of cloud that's come down the valley and is just trapped and hanging there whilst the sun comes up and uh, burns it off. This is a lovely thing about uh, watercolour. I'm putting on some darker tone here now. And if I then just take a damp brush on the top there, just kiss that edge. It was nice and soft. And if you don't move it around too much, your colours won't get um, too muddy. Down here on the water's edge. And from warm to cold colours and tones. I can dry that off at any point and then go over it again with more colour just to give myself a little bit more shape perhaps. And we can just continue doing that. I'm going to dry that off at that stage and um, maybe do a little bit more to that a little later on. You can see that I've done just a little bit more work. I've warmed up this piece of land here uh, with some more burnt umber. Um, but we're getting that nice tonal perspective now because these distant mountains at the top are um, quite blue, quite grey in their shading and so forth. Um, and the inversion that you can see here is helping us to differentiate between the, the hills right up by the shore, right in the fore, fore, foreground area, and the middle ground area, um, keeping those uh, separate. Um, one thing I didn't really mention was the fact that the tree, because it's darker um, than the rest of the, the painting, you can just paint through that. Uh, there's no need for any masking fluid or anything um, uh, for that. So I'm going to do some work on the water now and um, to establish that, as I said before, I want to try and capture the light towards the back. Now we've got this reflection here for the mountain, so I'm going to bring the lightness in the water down below that reflection and make, making the blue of the water a bit um, 
deeper right down here in the foreground. So in order to do that, I'm actually going to do something I didn't do in the hills, and that is I'm going to wet the paper with clear water first. Go right across the tree. Bring that water right the way down. And now the cobalt blue. So I'm going to leave this sort of area here more or less clear. If I do put any blue in, it'll be very, very light, just to give it just a slight tone. Use a little bit too much there. Let's just leave that there. That's fine. It'll dry lighter. But then establish deeper tone down here in the foreground. You could mix a little bit of ultramarine with the cobalt blue too and because cobalt, uh, because um, ultramarine is um, a slightly warmer shade of blue um, that would suit the foreground well but uh, I think I'll just stick to the cobalt leaving it sort of fairly streaky but you can see where I've made it I won't leave that like that but I've made it kept it virtually white and especially above the the hill uh, side reflections as well um, just got a little bit more blue there that I want, so what I'm going to do now, and I want it to look a little bit more streaky, is to take a dry brush and just move that blue around a little bit. Fine, so we'll dry that off. Now I'm going to do some work on the reflection of the mountains. I want them to be slightly softer, uh, a little bit more blurry perhaps than the, the real mountains themselves. Start off with the foreground mountain, um, establish that with uh, some yellow ochre. Now the, in the original photograph there are some white streaks going through that. Um, areas where you get sort of wind um, coming down onto the um, onto the water, what we used to call in, in Scotland uh, willy wars, uh, where you get just a little um, almost a column of air coming down and creating an area where um, there's wind, the side areas where there's not wind. And um, so I spent most of my time up there working in the yards and um, racing on the Clyde in the yachts and so on. Um, and you always looked out for these areas where the wind was uh, coming down in those sort of columns because that's if you had your yacht in that um, area, you could usually get well ahead of the opposition. If you weren't in that area, <laughs> quite um, quite frustrating. So I'm just trying to leave those little white streaks.
So I made a start there in the reflection. Now I'm going to go to the middle, um, middle, middle ground mountain, if you want to put it that way. So a little bit more blue. So cobalt blue. A little bit of yellow ochre. And we've got that inversion in between, so we've got to remember that. You often find it quite difficult sometimes to work upside down like this. It's important to try and maintain some tonal difference there to separate one piece of ground out from the other. I've got some hard edges there so I'm just going to drop in some water and then use a tissue just to remove some of that. I've added a bit more to the reflection, um, darkened it up in certain areas. Um, I've retained some of these white streaks that I wanted, but um, where they haven't really come through very well, um, I'm just going to use a bit of permanent white designer's gouache, the Winsor & Newton, just to like a few little white streaks here and there. Don't want to put too many in, but it just helps to replicate the sort of ripples that you you often see. And the other thing I've done is over here where there's a sort of horizon line. Um, actually, that wouldn't exist because there would be mountains behind there, probably. But um, I've just put a little bit of dirty cobalt blue tone just there, just to denote where the water and the sky meet. Um, and now, we're almost finished. We've got the tree to do. Um, there are no... There's no sort of greenery on it really from a photograph. Um, it's just a shape. It's in the foreground so it wants to be nice and rich and so on. And you want to decide um, which side is going to be light and which is going to be dark where the light's coming from. I'm going to say that the light's coming from the left hand side here. So the left hand side of the tree trunk and so on is going to be um, light and the right hand side will be darker. So just start off with some yellow ochre over the whole tree I'll just do the main tree trunk and some of the main branches just to start off with so you can see what I'm doing quite like um, if this was going into a frame I quite like um, pictures where the 
some of the subjects sort of disappear out through. the top of the mount or the frame. I know some people don't like that, they like to see uh, all of the all of each of the objects in the painting but uh, some of these branches are behind others so we'll deal with those differently in a minute. That's the main would work. Just stiffen that up a little bit. With uh, neater yellow ochre. So again I'm working wet into wet. And then I'm going to take some burnt umber Start working on the right hand side of the tree here. Now this tree's got to come, it's brown like the uh, some of the background, so it's got to come forward in the eye, so it needs to be nice and bold, nice and dark. So in a moment I'll add some cobalt brown to really darken it up and working wet into wet like this is lovely subtle change from light to dark, from left to right. And if that doesn't happen, as you can see at the top of the, the tree there, you just take some water, just soften that a little bit. Make that a little bit stickier. So I've got to bring this tree trunk ahead of the background. So you can see the background there is quite a medium tone brown of some sort. And we've got a medium tone brown at the moment on the tree trunk. And therefore the tree trunk is not showing up in front of, of the mountain. So we need to do something about that. And the way to do that is to increase the tone, the, um, the value if you like of the, uh, the tree trunk. So we'll mix a little bit of burnt umber. A little bit of um, violet there just to make it keep it warm and then we'll add a little bit of cobalt to it as well make it nice and sticky and there you can see now that um, by darkening it up it's making the whole thing look a little bit more round and it's bringing that tree the woodwork on the tree forward of the mountains. I'm working wet into wet as you can see on this slightly rough paper you get this lovely graded um, texture from the dark side of the tree to the light side which amplifies the fact that it is a tree. Okay, 
So what I'll do now is um, just finish off the, some of the twiggy bits. So that's our tree almost complete. Just add a few more um, twigs. And obviously you need a, a, a brush with a nice fine point here. And notice how with um, trees um, that uh, for most of these sort of trees, the, the branches and, and so forth are um, what I call awkwardly shaped. They are they're what I what I call controversially, I suppose, um, male shaped. Um, so often I see trees where the branches are very sort of rounded and. Uh, or well, the direction of the branches is very rounded, um, which I'm in grave danger of doing there myself. Um, whereas they're often just awkward and gnarled, gnarled in their shape. So often I've seen a, a, um, a tree that's been ruined by branches which are either too straight or too round. It's often a good idea to go from the main part of the branch and then work your way out. That's not always possible. That's fine. Okay. Um, and then I think we, we, we have it. Um, just one, two things to point out. The tree is vivid, it's uh, warm in uh, tone and colour, which brings it forward, it's in the foreground, ahead of the mountains in the background. Um, but we've kept shapes and so forth quite simple, um, not gone for too much detail using the photograph purely as an indication of of shape, of uh, position and so forth, but not afraid to change the photograph. You don't have to um, do exactly what the photograph shows. So um, my mountains are not quite the same shape as the photograph. They're um, a bit lighter in many respects. Now, having completed the um, the picture. Um, everything's gone okay, except that I feel that whilst the tree is nice and well forward of the, the mountains and so forth, there's an area around about here which is needing something added to it. In other words, the arrangement overall, although it started well, offset tree, mountains in the background, clouds and so forth, was okay. Having done the picture now, I feel that there is more that's required. And this is a situation that um, I've seen happen quite often with people at art clubs and so forth. They've done a picture, they thought the photograph was great. Um, they've even made changes from the photograph as they've done the picture, but as they've finished it, they've realized that it's, there's just something missing. And it's this area here that I feel needs some work on, uh, on it. Um, and so what I've done, you might just uh, see here very lightly some pencil marks um, for some more branches perhaps attached to this tree or coming down up from the, the the ground below it and what I might also do is over here um, to balance things out just a little bit but not too much because I like imbalance is I've just penciled in uh, a moored um, rowing boat now the colours uh, for that are basically the same uh, as we've already got. So the certainly the tree bits are the same as the tree there, and the rowing boat here too. I would not change the colour of that into something brighter or whatever. I would um, uh, keep the the colours more or less uh, the same as the tree. So browns and so forth, um, rather than introduce anything that's uh, particularly new. So I'm going to start this off. In the same way that we did the, um, the 
tree. So yellow, um, yellow ochre. And what I'm doing is I'm connecting the tree more and more with the background. Um, I think we could perhaps do with another branch over here. So this will be the same process as I've already done. So as you can see here, I've put in um, some branches and twiggy bits and so forth, which some of which are part of this tree, um, others perhaps coming from another tree down, down lower, lower down um, on the land here, um, and. What's happened now is that I've connected the tree a little bit more with what's going on down in this lower section. And so we've got a little bit more interest, a little bit more um, uh, um, movement and so forth within the painting, connecting the tree to what, I, what is the, um, the reflection. Um, however, having done that, I still feel that we lack something over here to give us a slightly more balanced interest. And therefore, as I mentioned before, um, what I might do, or what I will do in fact, is put in um, a rowing boat simply sitting there in the water, um, or moored perhaps, using much the same uh, colours, tones and so forth as I've already got for the, for the tree. So again, just a rough outline sketch, and what I'll do is start off with a little bit of yellow ochre and you'll note that I've got the boat with its bow pointing to the right pointing into the picture um, which is quite important, it's important to arrange these things so that the, the boat looks as though it's is adding to the picture rather than if it was facing the other way, um, perhaps taking away from the picture. It's a bit like a cottage with a um, a gate um, and a pathway going up to the cottage door. Having the gate open gives a sort of a message that um, viewers, if you like, are welcome. It's a sort of a bit of psychology. So there's my boat going in. Let that dry and put a little bit more detail in after that. So now you can see I've put the, um, the boat in. Uh, yellow ochre, burnt umber, a little bit of um, cad, um, cad blue, just to darken it up uh, um, here and there. Um, and reflection using much the same sort of colours. Notice I've just left some little uh, gaps there. I often leave a little white gap between the bottom of the hull and the reflection that stops and starts. It's not a continuous white gap and it just um, helps to differentiate the uh, reflection from the boat itself. Now having done that, looking at the picture again, I feel that we've now got a complete picture. We've got a balanced picture um, in that um, the tree over here which was beautifully offset and I I quite, as I say, like an offset uh, type of um, arrangement, is now partly balanced at least by um, this boat over here and the tree is now connected to the bottom area here of water by um, these additional branches and twigs and so forth. Um, and so I think overall the picture, for me anyway, is looking um, a lot better. Um, we've just used three colours, uh, yellow ochre, uh, burnt umber, and uh, cobalt blue um, and that helps to give a picture which is um, together unified um, and those three colors give you a wide range of um, other colors that you can um, gain by mixing them together and they work together very very well so I've enjoyed doing that I hope you've enjoyed watching um, and I wish you every success with your um, own artwork um, many thanks for watching.